Hello and welcome to Enlightened Empaths, your community for the spiritually awakened. This week we're going to be doing our popular community connection show where we share questions and stories that you all have sent us. And I don't know about you, Denise, but this is my favorite show to do each month. It's fun because it brings us all together. Yes, exactly. It's like we're all sitting around a table and talking. So if you guys are listening to this and thinking, I have a good story I'd like to share, or I have a question I'd love to hear them discuss, you can always send us a question on our Facebook page, which is Enlightened Empaths, or you can email us, enlightenedempaths at gmail.com. So Denise, would you like to start us off? I'd love to. Okay, this first question, the lady writes, I see a lot of people who are waking up talking about the fact that we're living in the matrix and to rise above the illusion. My question to you guys is, how true do you think that is? And do you believe the global awakening has started with the things that happened in France? I think that we're definitely in a major awakening right now. So many people are suddenly feeling more sensitive, more intuitive. We're redefining boundaries with social and cultural structures where people are finding their voice again. I mean, this is a very, very, very exciting time to be on the planet. And I tell myself that if I start to slip into the fear-based stuff. As far as the things in France, I think it's a part of it. I don't really feel it's, it it started. I feel like it started prior to the things in France. Oh, I agree. I agree. You know, we had Dr. Diana Pasuka on um, my other podcast, Psychic Teachers. She has written a book called UFOs, Religion and Technology. And she was saying how she was never interested in UFOs or anything like that. And suddenly in 2012, she started encountering all these stories that were of a religious nature, but that had significant UFO elements to them. And she started getting really into the topic as a research point of view. And as I was listening to her, I I told her, I said, me too. I always used to listen to people who talked about aliens and channeling off-planet intelligences. And I would think, whew, you need to ground that energy. (laughs) It's a little too out there for me. And right around 2012 is when I started researching it and looking at it from more of an academic point of view than a, here's what planet Zoltar told me. And I thought, I wonder if that's what the 2012 thing was about that the Mayans talked about. What if it wasn't the end of the world? What if it was the end of one way of consciousness and the beginning of a new consciousness? And that correlates with what we talked about a few shows back about ending a seven year cycle that started in 2012. Yes, exactly. And I also have seen firsthand and through clients and in the media and with new books coming out that more and more people are waking up to their intuition. Mm -hmm. And I really think part of this consciousness awakening is realizing and accepting that this sixth sense that we all have is not woo woo and weird. It's as natural as your sense of smell, touch, taste, sight, et cetera. And so I think that's part of this awakening. Yes, I do believe we live in something like the Matrix do. And I think it is our responsibility, like the Gnostics taught us years ago, to wake up through knowledge and awareness. And if we're going to continue with the analogy of the Matrix. It supports what we talk about a lot, the polarity of people raising their vibration and people feeling more stuck and dense or choosing to to focus on things that are a little more heavy or um, fear-based. Yes, I agree. Okay, our next question says, thank you so much for all you do. I love your show and your insight has helped me immensely. My question is about empathic proximity. Something happened yesterday. I was having a normal day, but then was hit with an overwhelming sense of grief that resulted in me sobbing out of nowhere and wouldn't stop. This is not my normal behavior without a reason, and there is no apparent cause for this in my own life. Even when I was alone in my apartment, the feeling remained strong. I've been an empath for as long as I can remember, and I'm usually aware when I feel something that's not mine. This was very intense this day, more so than normal. It wasn't until later in the day that I learned it was the anniversary of the Sandy Hook shooting. Although my heart breaks for those families, I have no direct ties to that event. So my question is this, 
do you believe we have to be in close physical proximity to someone in order to pick up on their emotions? Do you think we can unknowingly tap into the collective if a lot of people are grieving at once, for instance? Also, another question. If you have a strong connection with someone and you regularly pick up on each other's emotions, do you think you can still experience their emotions even though they are miles away and having a hard day? I'm trying to make sense of this and I'm looking at all possibilities. Thank you for all you do, Kate. I think that's such a good question. Oh, it's a fabulous question. And, and my short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's my short answer too. My longer answer would be to look at the quantum physics that we have recently been discovering about how consciousness and, and quantum energy actually works. You know, they've actually taken, for example, like a, like a subatomic particle, right? And they have separated them and sent them miles and miles and miles apart. And yet those two particles can still communicate and still can connect and act off of each other. They have taken cells from a heart and to put them in different Petri dishes and those cells still beat to the same rhythm that they beat when they were in the same heart together. So I think that we are still beginning to understand really and truly what energy works and how it is all connected. But at least the science is now backing up what we've always known. You know, our last question was about the matrix, which is makes me think of a web, you know, this the web of energy that connects us all. And if you think about a web, if you do something on one area of the web, it vibrates throughout the whole web. I mean, that's why a spider spins her web the way she does, because the minute an animal, an insect lands on it, it vibrates up to her and she can feel it and then go and do what she needs to do for her, for her food. So yes, I do feel that energy is everywhere and you do not have to be in close emotional or physical proximity to feel a very strong emotion, whether it's anger, grief, or sadness, or joy, celebration, it, it doesn't matter. As long as the intent of the energy is strong, I think we can all tune into it. I agree with everything you said, and I, two examples are, um, you and I both do distance readings. Why can we tap into someone's emotional, even it can be through an email, it can be through a voice, but it, you don't have to have contact with someone. Also, um, you know how sometimes you'll just know something's off with one of your kids, you'll just feel it on a core level and it's, it's past intuition and you'll reach out and you'll make sure they're okay or a dear friend that you have that connection with or I think so many of us have the people in our lives that you go to pick up the phone and you know who it is because you can feel their energy. I think that that's that same type of a thing as far as tapping into the collective 100% and especially remember when they did all the things about how many people had dreamt about 9-11 before it happened. Yes. And they did this and everyone was tapping into that energetic field. And I mean that that leaves such a traumatic emotional scar on the planet. Those natural disasters, you know, the hurricane, that left a, an energetic imprint on your area. The wildfires yes. out west, those all so I do truly, truly believe that. And I, I love this question by the way. Also, I really appreciated that she, she stated she's really good at knowing what's hers. Like, she's really good at this is mine, this isn't. But I'm going to jump back to the other question about waking up. It seems like people, myself included, I can only use me as an example, I'm becoming more and more sensitive to other people's energy, whether they're in proximity or not. Have you found that as well? Yes, I definitely have. Say some more about that. Um, well, I think that I gave someone a ride the other day, someone I, you know, an old friend, and it was just a ride. And after they got out of the car, I felt heavy. I felt, I felt everything that they left in my car with me. And I thought, I do have empathy and compassion for this person. We're not especially close, but we're, we have, you know, a friendship. And it just was so dense and heavy. And I use that word a lot because it feels different to me than it ever has. And I think a lot of folks are experiencing that. And she said that as well, that she's felt it more intensely, more than normal. And I think that that's happening for a lot of people right now. I do too. And I think it's part of 
embracing your intuition and giving it the validation and credence it deserves. So for example, if you're thinking about a friend out of the blue frequently throughout a day or a week, I even if you don't get a message to accompany it, I recommend that you reach out to that friend and just say, hey, checking in, everything okay? Because yes. oftentimes you'll find that that friend was either just thinking about you or going through a difficult time and needing to hear from someone. So that connection is still there. Think about all those studies they did of people who would pray for people in the hospital recovering from surgery. And the people in the hospital had no idea they were being prayed over. And in those studies, the ones who were being prayed over by anonymous strangers recovered at a much faster rate than people who were not being prayed over. But that was, you must be psychic because that was my next <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think whenever, you know, she says, if you have a strong connection with someone, can you pick up on them even though they're miles away? You know, you've just answered that beautifully with our example of doing phone readings and all of that. But also, I think it goes back to cords. Anytime you connect to someone, an energetic cord is connected. And again, if you go back to my web analogy, you can tug on that cord when you need that person to connect with you. And if you're in tuned and intuitive, you can feel any tug on your cords, which is yes. another reminder why it's so important to do psychic protection and cord cutting because you don't want everyone corded to you. But even, I have to jump in one more thing with that. Even though you may have done your cord work, if someone has had a significant impact on your life, like sometimes I'll get that feeling about my ex-husband and we have very minimal contact and I'll get a strong feeling, so I'll check in with the boys, how's your father doing? Or I'll you know, see him go by in the vehicle, or there's some medical thing going on. So it doesn't have to be that you haven't, it, it can be that random as well. I totally agree. You know, one thing my daughters have started doing is writing this stuff down, because it happens to them so frequently, like they share a bathroom, and they'll be brushing their teeth at the same time, and one is singing a song inside her head, and the other one will start singing the song outside, you know, out loud. And the sister <laughs> will go, that. I was just singing that in my head. And so they've actually started writing it down because it happens to them so frequently and they just want to track it. Yeah. And that's a, an excellent point is to, because the more you, you pay attention or the more you say, yes, I'm paying attention to this and um, it brings more of it in. Yes, exactly. Okay. Ready to read the next one? I am. Okay. It says, good evening. I wanted to pass this message on to you and Denise. I was on my way to work yesterday morning. I have an hour commute, and I listen to Enlightened Empaths, Psychic Teachers, and other podcasts on my way to work. I'm a paramedic in Flint, Michigan, and I've listened to the Angel podcast before and listened to it again today after my incident yesterday. When I get to the Genesee County line, I always pray to my spirit guides, guardian angel, God, and all the goddesses and all the archangels, to protect my partner, myself, our ambulance, and just to guide us in our journeys. And I try to remember to put us in white bubble of light too. Yesterday, as I crossed the county line, I felt an overwhelming urge to pray for extra protection from Archangel Michael, along with my normal prayer. I also wear an Archangel Michael medallion on my necklace, along with my mom's thumbprint and my family stones. Our day was pretty uneventful until late afternoon. We were heading back to, the, to our base for coverage and we were driving down the street when we were flagged down by some people on the side of the road. We stopped to see what they needed and it looked like their family me member was having a seizure. As I talked to them, they told me that the family member was having a mental illness issue and was trying to run into traffic. I escorted the person to the ambulance with the help of the family. Once in the ambulance, things got even worse. My partner, who is a big guy, and I had to fight and wrestle the patient for 15 minutes until the police arrived and helped hold him down so I could sedate him. After we got him on the stretcher restrained, sedated, and we were on our way to the hospital, I noticed something falling out of his front right pocket. I said to the officer that was on that side, he pulled out a seven to nine inch long steak knife. I felt all the blood drain from my face and head. I also said a few choice sentence enhancers to go with it also but I felt a peace come over me like a blanket. It was an odd sensation to describe. 
I don't know if it was my guardian angel or Archangel Michael reassuring me that I was okay. I'd been kneeling on the patient where the knife was. It could have been very easy for it to slip the wrong way while we were wrestling him. I thank you for all the work you do. I love all the podcasts that you do with Denise and Deb. On a side note, not sure if I remember my last message to you about my stepson seeing shadows and being afraid of them. I put black tourmaline and tiger's eye into the corner of his mattress, gave him one to hold at night in the shape of a heart, made a sage smudging stick for his room at our house and his mom's house, put a selenite wand on his windowsill. All seems good so far. I even put quartz clusters around our common areas in the house. Thank you, Tanya. I love that story because it reminds us that when we ask for protection, we actually do get it. Yes. But we need those reminders, don't we? Yes. And I do that a lot. I'll protect people I love. I'll protect their cars. I'll protect, I'll ask for angelic protection. I think traveling in cars, especially there's just a little bit of distracted people as people check their Facebook or answer emails while they're driving down the interstate at 80 miles an hour. Just a pet peeve, not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> but, but, well, it's scary. It is. It's, it's, it, I mean, literally, you'll see people coming at you and you can see the top of their head. You can't see their face. But I think the fact that she does that on a routine basis, she's built that faith. She knows they're there. And when she said she felt a sense of peace, to me, that's such an angelic presence type of thing. Yeah. And it was almost like Archangel Michael saying, relax, I got your back. It was confirmation that she asked for protection. It was there and all was going to be okay. So thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, our next one is a, just a fun little tip from our listener page. I just heard a wonderful tip for the new year on a radio show this morning, and I thought it would be great to pass along. Change your password that you use for an account often to something you need to remind yourself of for motivation or to affirm. For example, surrender 2019, or be the light 2019, or put the cookie down 2019. <laughs> She says, I thought this was such a great way to incorporate affirmations throughout the day. That is a really good tip, isn't it? Yeah, I do that. I do things that amuse the hell out of me. <laughs> or either that or ones that, like, I had to change some account. My computer got hacked a while back, so I had to change all these accounts. And I had, like, a beginning that was the same. And then I put, like, travel exclamation point or fun or joy. And I just, so when I log into those accounts, it does. It gives you a little boost. It's fun. Yeah, it's a nice reminder to your subconscious, too. Um, and we had another question I wanted to share quickly. Hello, ladies. Looking for an episode you did late 2017 about surviving the holidays. I wanted to share it with a friend who lost her sister a few years ago. I can't seem to find it on iTunes or Spotify. My friend's sister was and is still my best friend. Where can I access this episode? So I looked into this, and... We only had the last 50 shows on iTunes and Spotify. So Denise did her techie magic, and now all of our shows are back up on iTunes and Spotify. So if you want to listen to some of our older shows, especially that one, Surviving the Holidays, it is now up there once again. So thank you for letting us know that that was no longer there. Yes, and very grateful that it was an easy fix. Yeah, me too. Um, and All right. You want to share? Oh, you know what? Let's take a quick break and then we'll share the rest of our questions and stories because I just wanted to mention some really great stuff that we have coming up for our listeners if they wanted to join us. Denise and I are doing a series of webinars on mediumship on Wednesday evenings in February, we're doing our Mediumship 101 class where you can really learn, are you a medium? How can you use your mediumship? And you can start to practice in real time with other partners who are new to this as well. So we'll be teaching you the history of mediumship, different types of mediumship, how to work with your body as energy to fully awaken and strengthen your intuitive muscle. Each week you're partnered up with someone new so you can practice this. You also get invited to our closed Facebook group of everybody who has taken this webinar with us before so that you can start to expand your network of friends who are interested in this. And it's just nice because sometimes people will pop on and say, hey, I have the day off today. Does anyone want a reading? So it's a nice way to safely connect and really experience the vulnerability we all feel when we're starting to take those first toe steps into thinking, am I a medium? 
So that will be offered Wednesday evenings, February 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th. And then in March, on Fridays from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., we're going to be offering our advanced mediumship class. This is for anyone who has taken our mediumship 101 class. And Denise, do you want to tell them what they can expect in that class? With the advanced group? Yeah. That is a higher level, it's more practice, it's more partner exercises, it's, uh, we're going to touch on medical intuition, uh, animal intuition, how to hold a stronger link, how to bring through another, like a higher level of evidential so that you know it's not, you know, oh, it's your grandmother and she loves you. And in the 101, we focus a lot on identifying, you know, an energy of what's coming forward, male, female, but this brings it to the next level with more evidential, which we're both evidential mediums. So we want the, the concrete that says, that validates that that's actually your person in spirit. So again, there'll be more, uh, more practice, more partner work. And uh, we're even toying with opening that up a little bit to some public readings as well from people from the Facebook page. Yes. So that will be Fridays during the day in March, March 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th. And then we'll do it in the evenings on Thursdays in April, April 4th, 11th, 18th, and 25th. And you can find out more about that by going to our website, samanthafay.com and thegratefulmessenger.com. We had such a great experience and lots of people sign up for our business of being spiritual webinar that we'll probably be offering that again at some point as well so just uh, keep keep in touch with us we always post our doings on Facebook and we keep it updated on our websites as well and Denise you have a really cool event coming up in February can you tell people about that I do. It's a women's night out. It's going to be held in Portland. You can find it on my Facebook page, The Grateful Messenger. And it's all kinds of practitioners. It's free admission. I'll be doing mini readings. There's a lady doing mini astrology. There's Reiki. There's Zumba. There's cosmetic enhancement. There's jewelry. There, It's just a really fun group of uh, women-owned businesses in Maine. And again, it's a free event. It's from 532 8 or 8 30 on uh, February 7th so it should be a really nice evening and just to meet some of the local practice practitioners and also see some vendors and uh, but it's all independently owned businesses which I'm really excited to do this it's an amazing amazing group of women that sounds awesome you need to post that on our Facebook page too okay all right would you like to read our next question I will. It's a little bit long, so I'm going to paraphrase some parts of it, but we'll get the gist of it. It says, hi, lady, I've done... Hi, lady, hey. No, <laughs> hi, lady. <laughs> hey, lady, I've... hey. <laughs> Lay across my big grass bed. Okay, I'll stop. I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> I might not, though. Um, I have done a group reading with Denise several years ago, and I've just started listening to your podcast. You ladies are awesome, and I've enjoyed listening very much. So to start with, I'd say I'm just a normal girl who's always had a strong intuition and never paid much attention to it. My story now is too long for an email, but I've been drawn to your podcast, Denise, Samantha, and John Holland. I recently went to the bookstore and was drawn to a book, The Intuitive Dance. I couldn't explain why I even pulled that book. I put it back several times, but I just knew I had to bring that book home. And I also seemed to think I needed to have the tarot oracle deck John Holland in the store. Knew they had it. Oops, okay, that kind of blended. Uh, it, so anyway, long story short, the man couldn't find it. And then when she went back to the same spot, there was the deck right in front of her. So she gets up to the checkout and she had spent $41.12 and she almost put them back because she wasn't used that's, that can be a chunk of change sometimes to spend that. And she wasn't really comfortable spending it. And then after the bookstore, she went to get some groceries. And again, the number 4112 came up. So she asked, was it a sign? And I would say yes, if there's something. And some people are really good with the angel numbers or the numerology stuff. That's something that is just a little on my periphery. I know you're really good with it. She did go on to say that she used the cards, had a very strong connection, other numbers, and it kind of opened the floodgate. So with, with a mediumship, with a connection to the land, and I think the fact that she was so nudged to go back and make sure she got that deck, that's a sign. A lot of times we'll resonate with a certain deck and it just feels right and we 
it's similar to what I said in the last show about the bond with the Judith Warlock surrender cards. It will just happen that instantly. Uh, and, I th and she went on to say that this opened the floodgates with hearing a woman's voice. And I think that be open to that, but always remember that you're in control of how it happens. You don't have to, that's a nice thing to say after our surrender show, right? You're in control. But I, I think that, again, being nudged to get the book, get the cards, the fact that they weren't there and then they were, the, the sequence of numbers coming through the same, and also how it just kind of opened up to, you know, some mediumship and some connections with, with spirit. That's pretty impressive. I think so too. And you know, numbers, if you think about the universe, the universe is made up of numbers. It's, it's sacred geometry. Now, some numbers are pretty obvious to figure out. You know, seven is a mystical number. 1111 is a manifesting sequence people often see where the universe is asking you, what do you want to manifest now? 22 is a master builder number. 4112 is a very specific number. So I thought, well, let's just add it up and see what we get. And if you add up those numbers, four plus one plus one plus two, you get eight. And eight is the number of power. It's the number of owning your power, accepting your power. It's also, if you turn it on the side, it's the infinity symbol, which is another example of power. You know, it goes on without end. Eight is also the number of financial abundance. And so I feel like that number popped up twice for her to tell her that she is worthy of spending this money on herself mm -hmm. and that she is coming into her own power. And I just also want to say, when you invest in you, the universe invests in you. Mm -hmm. So when I'm not saying everyone should go out and spend $41 on books <laughs> every day, but I'm just saying when you do make a big purchase for yourself, try to overcome that feeling of, oh, why did I do that? And try to remember when I invest in myself, the universe invests in me. Great message. Very good message. Okay, our next question says, I had a reading recently to see who my guides were. The medium had a hard time seeing my light at first. She, th she then said this was the first time she had seen someone with a white light around them and that my guide is an ascension angel. I also had some shadows pulling my energy. I'm in recovery for 10 years and apparently had some souls lingering, clinging to me. So I got hypnotized to find who these souls were and to help them pass. She said, my angel's name is Sonia. I've always known the spiritual life, but was not sure how to go about it. I've always had a fascination with angels and passing over into the light. One day years ago, I had this reassurance that when I leave this body, I will not have to come back to this realm. Maybe I have fulfilled my contract. I love how you girls cuss on the podcast. <laughs> so my question is, what the hell does all this mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. First of all, I always see white light around people. How about you, Denise? More so lately. I've been seeing auras, which isn't a strong suit for me. And I've been seeing white light. I'm not seeing color. I'm seeing just like a white around them. Yeah. If, and if you guys are listening to this going, what the hell are they talking about now? Take a, <laughs> take a leaf. Just go outside and grab any green leaf you can find. Most of them right now are probably brown and withered. But if you can find just a green leaf... Put it on a black piece of paper or a solid, any solid, but white or black is best, and stare at it to the point where you zone out. You know that feeling where your eyes kind of glaze over? You will see a hazy white light around that plant leaf. And that's one of the first steps to starting to see auras. So um, I'm surprised that this medium said it was the first time she'd seen white light around someone because I think we all emit that white light because that's where we come from. Um, she says she was in recovery for 10 years and had some shadow energy around her. I think that can be common because whenever we do anything to excess, it does poke holes in our aura and allows those energies who maybe aren't passing on due to their own addictions to kind of plug into us and imbibe along with us. So anyone who is in recovery should do some type of psychic cleansing. I'm not a fan of telling people, oh, you have to go to a shaman to do this. You have to go to a Reiki healer. You have to go to, no, you can do this yourself. I think that's really important. You don't have to pay anyone to do this. You can do it simply with your intent 
and through studying how to do a good psychic protection. So you can just listen to a good psychic protection meditation on YouTube, for example. My favorite is Ted Andrews Psychic Protection CD. I think I already told you guys, you can't get it as an MP3. I had to get it as a CD, wait two weeks, and then I had to buy this CD burner thing for my laptop, but I did it because that's how much I love Ted Andrews and his teachings on psychic protection. So you can do it yourself and you can do a cord cutting to all of this stuff. Um, she says that she's always known that she was spiritual and has had a fascination with angels. So what all of this means is that she's been called to engage her spiritual side for a long time. And maybe part of her addiction and recovery process, maybe a part of that was her denying her intuitive self. I think a lot of intuitives have done that where they'll try to numb it out for a while. Uh, Echo Bodine writes very honestly about that in some of her books. And so I think that can be common where people will just want to drown out the intuitive feelings. And that's one of the reasons why you and I do this show, Denise, is to teach everybody that being empathic and intuitive is a gift, not a burden. You just have to learn how to work with it, how to use it, and how to keep your energy protected. Another cool trick to see auras is if you're ever in an audience or you're in a, and I'm not advocating, not paying attention, but if you're saying like somebody might've been in a teacher staff meeting at one point and kind of bored and might've done this, just saying. And if there's a white background, you can let your focus go and you'll see the aura around the person at the front of the room. And it, it's really cool because you'll watch it go up and down as they're speaking or if they're passionate about something. So if there's a white background, you can even do this with a, a friend or a, if, if you have a light colored background and someone is in front of it, you'll see the, if there's no distraction around them, that's a great way to practice sing auras as well. Yeah. And, and you know, another good place to do that is church. Mm -hmm. I'd love whenever my priest is giving a homily that he's really excited about this white light just shoots up around him. It's so cool to watch. I do want to say though, the little negative Nelly in me, Denise, uh -huh. a couple of things about this experience I just want to point out for people who are new to getting readings. If you go to someone and they tell you, you have all these attachments and you need to come back to them so they can remove the attachments. That can be a warning flag of someone who's not super ethical. Yes. Do you agree? I agree. And I don't know if I shared this on the show about being down on the coast doing a reading and the, the woman had only had one other reading before and she went to the woman and that's exactly what she did. She said, oh, you, you have a, an attachment and you're going to have to buy all these crystals and you're going to have to do this and come back and see me every week. And she said, I didn't have $500 to give this woman to get. And she said, what, are you seeing anything? And I, I did let go with some colorful language about ethics and just my, my blunt version, don't give away your power. Yes. If it doesn't feel right, you don't have to be in that situation. But and that, well, that's just my own personal feeling on that. I feel very, very strongly about not taking advantage of people who are trying to find answers or connect with someone in spirit or, and I'm not saying that this, this woman did that, but I just feel that I, I'm a big, big proponent. If it doesn't feel right or the person doesn't resonate with you, please don't take it to heart what they're saying. Yes. Yeah, you've got to you've got to really listen and tune in. And if someone, if you go to someone and they try to make you feel really special, like nobody has this light, nobody has an ascension angel, or I've never talked to someone who's such an old soul, those are always warning flags to me too. Mm -hmm. So just be careful whenever you go to see someone. Make sure that you listen to your intuition. If anyone tells you only I can remove this or only I can heal this or you have to buy this candle or that crystal, just stay away. Those are big, big no-nos. Right. Any, any genuine good intuitive is going to pass on what he or she is picking up for you, but their job is to simply be the messenger and then give you the tools to right. continue along your journey, not sell you the tools. No, it so, comes through, not from. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's what happened in this no. circumstance at all. I, I just just wanted to mention that. 
No. Okay. Do you want to read our next question? I do. Uh, oh, I look forward to your podcast every week and I'm so excited to take your webinar. Well, thank you. I'd like to ask you both how you stay motivated and focused. I find myself struggling with self-doubt and questioning myself at times. I'd love to hear how you both stay motivated and what you do when self-doubt creeps in. But I'm volley that one right to you. Okay. Well, I think that this is something that all intuitives have to struggle with. One of the things that I do every day is I pray to God and I say, you know, help me to stay in alignment with your will. Help me to be the best light worker I can be today and every day. And when I say, and I don't say those exact words every day, but every day I start with a prayer that I am in alignment with my soul purpose. And I think that's important. It helps to keep me focused on what I am doing. I like to stay passionate about what I'm doing by really staying current. So I'm always reading and learning and growing about what's going on in this field. One of the things I do to help me with self-doubt is I keep a validation journal. That has been really important to me because I do have moments of self-doubt. I have had, I remember I was studying ESP. I've started looking into the Rhine Institute and what they learned about ESP. I looked into Russell Targ's work and what remote viewing showed them in that program. And I started thinking, what if we're not doing mediumship? What if we're just reading people's minds? What if we're just reading their energy and, and reading, you know, what, what they are thinking or feeling or hoping to hear? And then I would, I remember I told a friend that once and she goes, well, holy shit, isn't that pretty cool all in of itself? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, maybe, but it's not mediumship. And then I started looking back at my validation journal. And what I do is if something really stands out to me about a reading, if something really hits me or is interesting or unusual, I will write it down. And oftentimes you guys are really nice and will give me feedback. So you'll say, you did a reading for me two years ago. You said A, B, and C would happen and that my grandfather would help this to happen. I didn't think so, but now it has happened. And I'll go back to that validation journal and I'll write that down. And that has taught me that a lot of the stuff that comes up for me in readings, and I know for you too, Denise, they weren't even in the client's realm of expectation or hope or thought processes. Yeah. So how could we have been reading their mind if they didn't even know this potential existed? Right. So creating the validation journal and maintaining it and sticking to it has helped me a lot with my journey of overcoming self-doubt. I also am a huge advocate of reading biographies of other spiritual people, whether they be intuitives or mediums or healers, and learning about their journey that has helped me to realize I'm not alone in this. And sometimes I learn tips and techniques as well from them to really keep myself motivated and focused. I also think it's important to just always ask yourself, and I mean that always, I mean, constantly check in, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And if you can't come up with an answer, then either you need to dig deeper or maybe you're not supposed to be doing this. But I think as long as you stay connected to why you are doing this, not because it's cool, it's fun, I can work for myself, your answer needs to be something like, my goal is to validate for people that we are not alone, that life does indeed transcend death, that our loved ones do go on, that they are with us, that there is help out there. That's my answer anyway, but you need to have an answer that keeps you motivated and focused on what you're doing and why the heck you're doing it. That was, that was a great, great answer. And I agree with you with everything you said. And I think the self doubt part is actually a good thing because it keeps you humble and it, you don't, it's not coming again. I'm going to say it. It's not coming from you. It's coming through you. So if you're having doubt, if you're having insecurity, if you're wondering, oh my gosh, what if I get something wrong? What if I don't? That's incredibly, incredibly normal. That is so normal. Also, when you were describing, you know, why do you do this? I always end the prayer and meditation before I meet with anyone with, please help me be of service. How can I best be of service? How can I help these people find what they're looking for or make that connection to, to their loved ones in spirit? If you step outside of yourself and you, you're, again, if you're the messenger, 
that changes the game. But I think the self-doubt is actually kind of healthy because it keeps you in check. You don't, I, I don't think this is an ego-based profession or it shouldn't be. Staying motivated, that's a work in progress, I think, for a lot of us. It is for me. Not motivated, but regulating the balance because if you're con if you're doing I had a whole stretch last month and I had to really take a step back because I pushed really hard. I met with a lot of people. They were happy with the readings, but I didn't take care of myself in the process. And that's a huge, huge, huge part of any kind of energetic work, any kind of being of service work is make sure you refill your coffers as well. So staying motivated, I think, has to be a combination of being really true with yourself of why you want to do this and also the motivation comes with time. Does that make any sense? Because I'm no, it does. circles with that. No, it does. It's, it's a balance. You have to be confident in your abilities, but you're absolutely right. If you lose your humility, I do think you'll lose a lot of this gift. A couple nights ago, I went and did readings for some people close by who have, I had done readings for them two or three years ago. And the woman was very, um, test the psychic kind of stuff, test the medium. I would bring through something evidential with someone's spirit. Well, yeah, he was six foot and he had blue eyes, but no, his hair was different. Or no, he didn't have, and, and I, it was one of those very testy. And I almost didn't go back when they called me a couple, few weeks ago and said, you know, could you come back and do readings for it? And I went in, I was, I was nervous. I was down, why am I doing this? I don't want to play that game anymore in my work. And I got there and I just, I prayed really hard and I, you know, asked for guidance. I talked to my guides. And when I went in, I just hit the floor running. I completely stepped out. And when she said, nope, that doesn't fit. And I said, well, then please put that on the back burner because it's something that they're telling me. So it must have something to do with, with part of this. And the, her husband was there and he was much more amenable to what I was saying. So when I said, you know, I brought through this older man in spirit and I said, there's something with his teeth. I feel like there's something wrong with my teeth. And, and he laughed and, and she said, nope, that doesn't fit. And he said, he had no teeth. That makes perfect sense. So don't let people shake you, I guess, is my other part of that. Yeah. Well, and also remember that we do have some control over who, who we read and who we don't. Yes. You know, one of the things I've said to my guides, because I, I go through that too, that's one of the reasons why I don't offer gift certificates anymore. Because what I found is someone would come to me and they'd be like, oh my gosh, like you really were talking to, you know, my dad or my best friend. I can't wait for you to read so-and-so in my family. He doesn't believe in any of this. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really hard for me to read skeptic closed. Well, I like skeptics, just closed minded people. It's very mm. hard. They, they put up these walls and I can't get through it. And I don't like the energy of trying to, I'm, I'm done proving myself, you know, like mm -hmm. been there, done that. If you don't want to believe in this, move along. There's other people who need, you know, the messages that are coming through. So I will always say to my guides, only bring to me people who need what I can provide. And that has helped a lot. The confidence comes with time. It does. It does. Sometimes I look, I look at other readers, like I look at John Edward. I wonder, was he ever not confident? True. I mean, but he, he's so amazing to watch. But then if you watch like a George Anderson, he's much more like you and I, I feel like he, I think he definitely has gone through that. What is this? Where is it coming from? So we all have our own different personalities that we bring to this. Something else that has helped me a lot, Denise, I've been doing so much reading on science and the science that backs this up. Mm -hmm. If you go to, for example, the Winbridge Institute and read some of the amazing work they've been doing researching mediums, that will show you that this is an actual ability. This isn't a gift. This isn't something random that certain special people get that it's an actual thing that can be tested. That has helped me a lot. Looking at quantum physics and understanding how this works has helped me a lot. But I've also been reading a lot of Annie Jacobson's work. She's a reporter, I think, with the Washington Post. And she wrote a great book uh, called Paperclip. 
and Phenomenon. Those are the two books I've been reading and listening to. And she has taken all the declassified files that the government did when they were researching psychics as possible you know, psychic spies. And it's really inter interesting to look at what the Russians and the Americans came up with in terms of what the mind and the brain can do when they tap into this energy. And that has helped me too. Mm -hmm. So again, practice, experience, validation journal, trusting, understanding why you're doing this, but also looking at other people, looking at research, looking at other biographies, watching other people do this. It's, it's a whole big constant cycle of, it's, it's a spiral, not a cycle. You know, you've got to spiral back into source, get the little nugget of truth, spiral back out and share it, and then spiral back into to the source, get another nugget of truth. So it's, um, it's a constant thing for me. It's, not a job for me it's, it's a way of life very well put well we hope that does it for you this show we hope that we've given you some things to think about some nuggets of your own truth to chew on as you go throughout your week always remember if you want to share a question or a story send us an email enlightenedempaths at gmail.com or message us on facebook enlightened empaths and if you have a moment please leave us a review on itunes because it helps other people to find us can people leave reviews on spotify i don't know i don't know either you can on youtube and i and some of the others so i would think you could on spotify I'll check oh i forgot that. we're on youtube that's right. You can find us on YouTube as well. So thank you everybody so much for listening. We will be back with you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to show up, do great work, and share your light. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.